Hi everyone, welcome to another Cloth Weaver tutorial. Now we are on version 4.1, and there are a few announcements I would like to cover first. The main clothweaver.com website has been out for almost a month now, so if you haven't checked that out, please do so. We also have an affiliate program where you can earn commissions on sales that you refer through special links. More info on that on the main website. So in the previous 4.01 update, there was a new button that allows users to deactivate an install of Clothweaver. For example, say you purchased one install and here you are working on your desktop and you're going on a business trip or traveling or whatever it may be, and you want to put Clothweaver on your laptop. How do you do that? Well, easy. On the desktop version, go open up Clothweaver and hit deactivate this install. Then, on your laptop, install Clothweaver as normal, enter your license key and email, and it will load up. And then, for the reversal, say you want to come back to your desktop, uh, first open up the laptop, go to Clothweaver, hit deactivate, and that will free up a license slot. And then, when you go back to the desktop, then repeat the process, and you're back in on the desktop. So now let's talk about 4.1. There is a new button here called Clean Up in Define Character, but that's related to it. So let's create some clothing for the character, and I'll show you how that works. Let's create the collared shirt. Boy. <clears throat> First off, make sure we are using Avastar or Manual Bastion Lab. And we want to apply a collision to our character. Hit Add Collision. I'll go to the Modifier tab, drag that up. And let's turn down the subdivision on the character. That way it runs quicker. Change our sewing force to 0.5. Now let's create the shirt. There it is, drag it up. Align it. Matches. Okay. And do a test. Put on clothing. Yes. Okay, it looks like these sleeves can be moved up. And this is where the backup restore feature comes in handy. It is very important to get the outline here. I'm going to call it the outline, the, the flat planes. It is important to get them situated as best as you can before proceeding. And that will help down the line. Let's go ahead and select these top ones. Click this button down here, turn on the proportional editing, and and I would encourage you to familiarize yourself with Blender. Take look up some tutorials on YouTube to figure out the basic settings. So for example, using the scroll wheel on the mouse will affect this sphere of influence. So if I drag this up and change the scroll wheel, it changes how much is affected. Now, um, let's go ahead and make it X and at the bottom here do the same. That way we have enough room, and let's go ahead and move these guys out from under the armpits. Give it give more room. Okay, let's try again. Put on Chloe. Give a better result this time. It'll have to do. Okay. Hit sew clothing. We're definitely going to make a few adjustments here. Collar again will need to be manually adjusted. I'll walk you through that. So let's click on our character, not the rig. Click on the character. Hit define character. Click on the clothing and hit clean up. And it's going to blow out a proportion here, so we'll need to. 
Okay, go to the beginning frame, change our offset here under the modifier tab. Change it to 0 0.01, 0 0.015, sorry, since manual Bastoni characters are so dang small. I don't know why they're so small. They shouldn't be that small. Okay, that's looking better. All right, let's change it to 0 0.2. There we go. There we go. Okay. And let's see, do I need to adjust anything here? Yeah, enter edit mode, edit, adjust some things. While I'm in edit mode, I need to mention on the cloth weaver panel here, there are some things that moved around. Um, the Reset UV feature is now under the edit mode. So you'll see custom cloth edit. That's when you're creating your custom clothing. And you can move over to the UV panel here. And you have a reset UV and a mark seam button. Easy access there. Uh, what are we going to do about this collar, Alex? Tell us how to fix that. Okay. What I'm going to do is do a loop select round the collar mm -hmm. and change the influence to be down okay we need to get rid of that shrink wrap just apply that real quick go ahead and apply the clothing to modifier <clears throat> i just want to scale this out a bit actually let's highlight this area uh, spacebar and hit smooth vertex. Affected, okay. And we're gonna select that whole collar again. Let's side. Now. Select the inner one and do the same. Drag it up or drag it up though. That's right. <laughs> select the outer. Select the back. Okay. In there. Then select that very inner one. And then, okay, not too, not, not too bad. It's kind of eh, but a few adjustments. Tough decision. Yeah, maybe not. No. <clears throat> okay. And while I'm here, uh, if we were to do those seams, um, just go to the UV, hit. Um, yeah, let's just go through our seams here. using the loop select if you didn't see that already okay and once around maybe it may be around the collar I would say yes definitely you'll need the collar yeah <clears throat> now mark seems Those are marked. <clears throat> and then you can uh, reset UVs to unwrap them. Or if you have UVs that need to be reset, then you can reset them. And I'd like to clarify the importance of the backups here and why they are crucial to speeding up your workflow and especially when troubleshooting. So again, you can hit reveal. 
that will reveal the back up here. This, and what Cloth Weaver does, before you put on the clothing, it automatically creates a backup here before you apply it to the character. Essentially, this saves a whole bunch of time as opposed to manually going over here, re-adding every single modifier and all the clothing parameters, pinning, uh, sewing forces, everything like that. Cloth Weaver just takes care of it you know, in the one button here by putting on clothing and all that. That simplifies everything and reveal just brings you back to the previous state. So this way you don't have to worry about manually duplicating objects and making backups. Cloth Weaver automatically takes care of that. So you don't have to worry about, oh no, I lost it. Urgh, why didn't I back up? Always back up, always back up. So now we can delete that backup because we don't need it, do we? Anyway, so that is version 4.1. And what can you expect in a future update? Well, a major one would be automatic updates. Yeah, so no more having to open your web browser and manually download, uninstall, having to go through all those steps can be a pain, right? So here at the top, you know, status, you have the latest version. But if a new one is available, you'll just hit install. So then it would pull down from the server the latest version and install it, replace what needs to be replaced. And it will ask you to restart Blender, restart it, and then it will boot up with the newest version of Cloth Weaver. Now, I have gotten a few comments from users asking if Cloth Weaver is compatible for Blender 2.8. Currently, that is in experimental mode, and they do not have an official release for 2.8 yet. So once it is close to an official release, then Cloth Weaver will be updated for 2.8. As I understand it, because of the whole UI changes and they're rewriting, I think they're rewriting all of Blender, um, a lot of, I think all add-ons need to be rewritten or at least updated in some way. I haven't looked clearly at the syntax yet, but it is my understanding that all add-ons for Blender will need to be rewritten. So it may take some time to get your favorite developers and add-ons ready for 2.8. That's my understanding of it. And as always, if you have any questions, please visit clothweaver.com and you can visit our frequently asked questions page and see if your question is in there. Uh, if not, then please send us a message via our help desk or email us at support at clothweaver.com and we'll get you taken care of. As always, I'm Alex, and I will see you in the next update.